Hi, I'm Aaron Fott, Chief Engineer and owner of Fott Race Engineering, and uh, I'm here this morning to show off our Rurig shock dyno and talk a little bit about how it's used. There's a, a lot made of shock dyno and shock dyno plots on the, on the forums, and I wanted to be able to provide a little background and information and show what this actually is and what it's about. We use a, a Rurig 2CV dyno, so the 2CV um, has a scotch yoke to provide the motion to the, the, that goes into the shock absorber. Um, we have a load cell at the top that measures the forces and then we have an infrared temperature sensor to, uh, to measure the temperature of the body of the shock. So we can, we can test based on temperature or, or set a limit to, to the temperature or you know, whatnot. So uh, our first test we're going to do is, um, is a basic, generating a basic dyno plot with our rear inverted shock absorber on a setting of six. Um, we've already warmed it up, but we're going to uh, confirm that it's back up to temperature and, uh, and then run the dyno test. So go ahead, Josh, you're going to hit the button. So you'll see that the, the scotch yoke moves the piston in the shaft up and down. Um, it's generating a force in the load cell, and the, the computer is going gonna, is gonna to record that data. Right now it's in the warm-up cycle. It's slowing down because it's going to do a seal drag test next. Um, the seal drag uh, talks about the friction that's inherent in the in shock absorber. Uh, any any shock absorber has a certain amount of friction, and there's always a trade-off between you know durability and uh, and, uh, and and seal drag. So it's performing the seal drag test. The next thing it's going to do is measure the gas pressure in the shock absorber. Um, we do that because the, you pressurize the uh, the oil in there with a with a nitrogen charge, and um, that keeps. Uh, it keeps the consistency uh, of the shock absorber during uh, a different range of temperatures. There it just performed the actual test. It's going to park itself back at its neutral setting. And then the, the dyno chart is going to show up on the screen. So this is a uh, the, the plot that was just generated from that test um, force generated by the, uh, by the shock absorber, the resistance force, the upper side is the compression damping and the lower side is the rebound damping. It, it uh, excites the shock all the way. We were doing that test at 10 inches per second, um, so it accelerates it from 0 to 10 inches per second so you get data all the way across the screen. Um, this is, uh, should be familiar to any of you seeing, uh, uh, you know, seeing dyno plots on the, on the internet or maybe in some shocks that you've purchased in the past. So that dyno plot doesn't mean anything without some practical testing. Um, we combine that uh, with vehicle testing on, both on the road and on the racetrack. And with those uh, pieces of information, we can relate characteristics on the dyno plot to functionality in the car. And uh, you know, so no testing is complete without you know, going full circle by you know, testing components here, looking for a desired, uh, a desired curve there, and then seeing what that desired curve does on the road. So you can see that the, the Roarg is a really cool piece of equipment. Um, we use it all the time. We're, we're in fact testing some uh, inverted aluminum shock absorbers we're, we're working on right now. They should uh, be in a coilover design. Um, they're going to have some really cool features, so stay tuned for those things. And uh, we'll see you out on the track.